Google Cloud Storage is a service that allows you to store any type of data like photos, videos or text files. In this tutorial, we will learn how to work with Google Cloud Storage in your Java application and perform common operations like uploading and downloading files. We'll also get into some concepts about how Google Cloud Storage works and how we can better interface with it. So stick around and let's get started. The first thing we'll have to do is create a bucket. You can think of a bucket as a container that all your files and data get stored in. To create a new bucket, navigate to the Google Cloud console. You may need to enable billing first. We can then click on this button to start creating our bucket. While creating a bucket, you'll need to choose configuration options such as where to store your data, the storage class, and access control. Some of the important options here are the name, which is the identifier that you'll use when accessing the bucket. One thing to note is that the name of the bucket must be unique across all of Google Cloud and not just your project. So in case you run into naming conflicts, just choose another name. When you create a bucket, you can also choose its geographic location. Cloud storage is a distributed system and objects are stored in different locations around the world. The location of the bucket determines where its objects are stored. Next is the storage class, which determines how your data is stored and allows you to trade availability and cost. For example, the standard storage class is the most expensive, but you can access your data instantly. Whereas the cold line storage option is the least expensive storage class, but it also takes the longest time to access your data. You can decide the exact storage class based on your application's needs. But as a default, we can choose the standard storage class. Once the bucket is created, you can view the files and folders within the bucket on the GCP console. Right now, our bucket is empty, as we can see here. If we want, we can manually upload files and folders using the UI. Now that our bucket is created, let's see how we can add some files here using our Java application. For running the Java code in this example, we'll be using the standard Maven project structure. If you want to know more about that, you can see my other video or blog post on the topic that I've linked in the description. First, let's install the dependencies that we'll need for this. We'll have to install the Google Cloud command line tools. You can follow the documentation here to install it for your operating system. Once installed, we can run this command to authenticate into the command line tools. Once you log in successfully, the Google Cloud SDK stores your authentication information in a default location on your computer, which is then used by our Java application. We also need to install the Google Cloud Storage and the Guava Java libraries. To do this, we can add the following dependencies to our pom.xml file. Now let's add some code to upload our files. First, let's create a sample file to upload. We'll create a file called sample.txt within the temp directory. This will contain the text hello world. Now let's open our app class. First, we'll define some static variables for our project ID, bucket name, and the object name. The object name is just another word for the file name that we want to upload. Now let's create a function to upload the file to cloud storage. First, we'll create a new cloud storage client. For this, we'll need to create a new storage options builder, set the project ID, and then get the service after we build it. The blob ID identifies the newly created file, which consists of a bucket name and an object name. Next, we create a blob info instance from the blob ID. We'll also define the file path on a local machine that we want to upload. And finally, we can use the create from method to upload the file into the location defined by our blob info instance. Once it's done, we'll print a confirmation message to the console. Let's run this code by executing the following Maven command. Once the code has executed, we can see the confirmation message that our file has been uploaded. If we check the GCP console now, we can see that the file has been uploaded successfully. We can use the same code we just wrote to update files that are already present in our bucket. To see this in action, we can run the same code as before, but change the contents of the file that we are uploading. Here, I'll change the text to hello world 2. If we run our code now, we should get the same output as before, but the file contents will now be replaced by the new version. To keep track of different versions of the same file, every object in a cloud storage bucket has a generation number. We can see the generation number of our file here 
on the GCP console. This is just a unique number that will change each time we upload a file to the same object location. The MD5 hash, on the other hand, will only change if the contents of the file itself have changed. So in the example we just discussed, we use the term blob a lot. So let's just take a minute to discuss what exactly a blob is. The blob class represents an object stored in a bucket. In almost all cases, we'll be using this class to interact with our files on cloud storage. Although we didn't use it in our previous example, the storage.createFrom method actually returns a blob instance. For all operations dealing with existing files, like downloading, deleting, or reading contents, we first need to get the blob instance for the file that we want to interact with. So to get an existing file, instead of using storage.createFrom, we can use the storage.get method along with the blob ID to get the blob instance. Let's see this in action by trying to download the same file that we just uploaded in our Java code. So the file path now will be the location where we want the file to be downloaded. We'll create the storage client and blob ID just like before. But now that we know that this blob already exists, we will use the storage.get method along with the blob ID to get the existing blob. We can then use the download to method to download the file and then print the status. We can run this code and see the output that our file has been downloaded. And now we can see the file appear in our temp folder and check its contents as well. If we want to read the contents of a file without downloading it into a folder on our local file system, we can do that as well. So the difference in this case is that once we get the blob, instead of using the download to method, we can use the get content method, which returns the binary data of our file. We can use the string constructor to convert it into a string and then print the contents of the file into the console. If we run this code, we can see the contents of the file printed within our Java application itself. We can also delete files from our bucket by calling the blob.delete method. So here, let's change our code to delete the blob and then print a confirmation message onto the console. If we run this code now, we can see the confirmation message that our file has been deleted. We can also check back on our GCP console and confirm that the file has in fact been deleted. An important thing to note here is that deleting a file is not idempotent. This means if you try to delete a file that doesn't exist, the code will throw an exception. So to avoid these kind of errors, we'll have to first check if the file exists before trying to delete it. So we saw that the storage.get method returns a blob instance. However, if the blob doesn't exist in our cloud storage bucket, it will be given a null value. By checking whether our blob instance is null or not, we'll know if our file exists. And we can add a check here to return in case the file doesn't actually exist in our bucket, which will avoid the error we just discussed. Okay, so now let's talk about how folders work. I'm sure that anyone who's used a computer will know what folders are, but when it comes to cloud storage, folders here work a bit differently. So cloud storage actually uses what's called a flat namespace. This means that folders don't actually exist and all files are stored directly within the bucket itself. You can still upload a file to say my folder slash sample.txt, but the path here is just a part of the file name and doesn't actually create any underlying folder structure. So while you can treat this the same way as a traditional file system when trying to create, update, or delete individual files, some operations will behave differently. For example, renaming a folder in a traditional file system is easy, but if you want to do it in your cloud storage bucket, that actually requires you to update all the objects within the folder individually. Despite Despite this, the cloud storage API gives us an illusion of a traditional file system for convenience. Let's look at a couple of examples where we interact with the folder system within our cloud storage bucket. If we want to create a file within a folder, we can use the same code as the one we did to upload our regular file. So the only difference here is that I've added a folder prefix to the file name. We can run this code and once our file has been uploaded, we can check our cloud storage bucket again and see that we have a folder here with the file that we uploaded inside it. We can also list files just like we would in our local file system using the cloud storage API. Let's create a new function to list all the files within our bucket. 
we can create our storage client like before and use the list method to get the files in the directory specified in the arguments. The current directory argument here means that we only want to list files in the current directory. If we didn't pass this option, we would get a list of all files in the bucket, including files in subdirectories. Since we've added this option, we will only get the files in the root directory along with any directories that are contained within it. The prefix option here is the prefix that we want to list files for. Since we want to list all files within the root directory, we pass an empty string. If we instead wanted to list the files within a particular folder, like my folder, we could pass that as a prefix instead. So now if we run this code, we will see all the files and folders contained in our root directory. So here you can see the folder that we just uploaded. If we want to list files within the my folder directory, then we can change the prefix to my folder. Now if we run the code, we can see that we've listed the files within my folder. So that about wraps it up. As we've seen, for the most part, we can treat a cloud storage bucket as a regular file system and use similar methods to interact with it. However, we must remember that under the hood, Google Cloud Storage is an object storage service and not a file system. This means that there are some differences in how it works and we need to be aware of them. For example, since there is no inherent folder structure, there are major performance differences between moving or deleting folders in a local file system and doing the same using Google Cloud Storage. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was useful to you and I'll see you in the next one.